Hello, everybody. Okay, so today's lesson on schizophrenia is actually going to come in two parts. And what you see now are some pieces of artwork done by patients with schizophrenia. And typically, if we were in the classroom together, I would ask you guys and girls what you see. What are some commonalities here in some of these paintings? What are some shared characteristics? Uh, just to do a little art analysis here. Uh, in the past, of course, many students would say that there's some uh, impending doom. There's these creatures, these monsters in these pictures. Um, and I think that's clearly evident here. People with schizophrenia, they have lost touch with reality. They are hearing voices. They have uh, disillusionments. They have a loss of perceptions. Uh, very scary um, hallucinations, both visual and audio, that they see and hear. And we'll get into that with some of the case studies today. But when you analyze and when you look at these pictures a little bit closely, you can see that these people are haunted. I don't think that's too strong of a word to examine their artwork and how they put their emotions and their experiences in these paintings. Um, so yeah, it's very, very interesting to get into some of these discussions, look at some of these pictures and paintings, and um, realize that these people, these artists that make them, yeah, they have a lot of stuff going on in their mind, to be sure. Now, I'm only going to show you a couple slides during this first part, and then we'll look at a case study of an actual painter lived a little bit more than about 100 years ago, um, late 19th century painter called Louis Wayne, and he did some really interesting paintings, and you see his schizophrenia developing uh, over the course of his paintings over the years. Really, really interesting. Yeah, great artists of the past, potentially suffering from schizophrenia. One of my favorite poets ever is Emily Dickinson, and she has this amazing poem, and it really is indicative of the potential mental illness that she had. I felt a cleaving in my mind as if my brain had split. I tried to match it seam by seam, but could not make it fit. The thought behind, I strove to join unto the thought before. But sequence raveled out of sound like balls upon the floor. Now, we didn't have schizophrenia as a term when Emily Dickinson was alive. We didn't have depression. We didn't have bipolar disorder. But no doubt, these things were in the human experience. And Emily Dickinson is a very reclusive poet, secluded herself off, and made sense of her world through her words, through her poems. Um, and again, this one definitely tells a tale. Check out her poetry. Great, great, powerful stuff. I know you've seen this painting before, Edvard Munch's The Scream, German painter from, again, the late 19th century. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful painting, his use of colors, just the story that's in this painting, the words that it, 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 it describes. Um, yeah, powerful, powerful stuff. Edvard Munch, did he have a mental disorder? Did he have something like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder or some type of mania or psychosis? A lot of evidence as you study these poets and painters and artists of the past that clearly they were people like us, uh, broken people with maybe even some forms of mental illness. Um, so very, very interesting when you look at some of these great, great artists of the past. It's always fun to do this in the class. And I want to keep that going um, and share some of these slides with you and some of these case studies with you today as well. So uh, right now I'm going to direct you to our friend, uh, Lois Wayne. He's a very interesting painter, and he is going to show you some of his world um, through his painting. So uh, have fun, and I'll see you again in a couple minutes for the slideshow is part two.